Hi there, and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we're looking at some other concepts. One will study um, the concept of elast elastic um, properties of solid. In the last class, we looked at the, the idea of Hooke's law and its mathematical expression, and we solved some questions on that. For today's class, we'll be looking at some other key concepts when, when we talk about the elasticity of material. We look at we look at cases such as or we look at new concepts such as stress, strain, and Young's modulus, and of course also look at the and also look at the work done in a spring, also called the elastic potential of a spring. So first things first, let's look at key concepts. The first key concept we look at is the concept of stress. All right. All right, so when we talk about stress, stress is simply the ratio of the force applied on an elastic material to the area in which the force is being applied. So I'm saying mathematically, stress is equal to force over area, all right? Stress is denoted by a symbol called this. This symbol is called sigma, right? Sigma is the Greek letter that is used to demonstrate stress. So we have this. So I said mathematically stress is the ratio of force to area. So stress is equal to force all over area. Mathematically, force is measured in Newton and area in meter square. So I said therefore the SI unit, the SI unit of stress is um, Newton per meter squared. So I have this. All right. So this is for stress. The next key concept to look at is called strain. All right. Look at another concept called strain. Strain is simply this here. All right. So we have this. Now, what strain? In the concept of elasticity, strain is simply equal to um, the ratio of the elongation. Now, we, remember we said when a mass or a force, or a weight, or a load is being applied to an elastic material, as we demonstrated in the last class. Now, by the way, if you missed our last class, I'll leave a link, right, to the video on, um, about Hooks Claw in the last class. I'll leave a link to our last class in the description of this video. So simply check the description of this video. You see a link to our last class. All right, so we said in the last class that when a force is being applied to an elastic material that there will be an extension. Now, when it comes to strain, we are taking the ratio of this extension produced to the original length. So we can say by definition that strain is equal to the ratio of extension to the original length of a material. So, um, okay, again, strain is being represented by another Greek symbol called epsilon, right? Epsilon is this, looks like an E, but it's called. This is called epsilon. It's a Greek symbol that we use to um, represent strain. So this is true. That means mathematically, strain is equal to extension, extension all over original length. Okay, let me call this original length. All over original length. Okay, so extension is measured in meters. Original length is measured in meters. From here, meters cancels meters. What does it mean? It means that extension or elongation has no SI unit. Please take note, please. That strain has no SI unit. So we can say it's a dimensionless quantity. Um, okay, so so far so good. We've said that stress is equal to force all over area. Also, we've said strain is equal to extension is called a change in length all over original length. Some authors will call this E. So we can say or extension is equal to E all over L. So what I choose to call it a change in length or an extension, they are the same thing. They're the same thing, all right? Just a little bit of a difference. 
Um, the little difference is this. If you go higher in the study of science, you learn that, or in the study of physics, you learn that strain is equal to not just extension, but a deformation, all right? There are two types of deformation. Now, let me explain this. If you have a spring, right, and you add a mass, we said the spring would do what there? It will extend, giving you an extension. Fine. What if you have that same spring here and you choose to push it upward? So if I apply a force such that it pushes the, the, the spring upward, what do, you, what do you observe? Observe that there's another type of deformation in which the length of the spring becomes smaller. All right, let me give you a demonstration of what I'm saying. I'm saying this. So case one, you have this spring here. Okay. Case two, the same spring here, I attach a mass as we did before. It comes down like this because I attach a mass. So it's coming downward. What if that same spring here, you choose to push it upward by a particular force? You agree with me that this thing will compress like something like this? Now, what do you observe here? What you have here is called an extension. The length of the spring has been um, increased. What you have here is called a compression. All right? So compression means the length of the spring has been reduced. So I'm saying this, that there are two types of deformation. So when it comes to the study of deformation, there are two types of deformation. The first one is called an extension. An extension is a kind of deformation that increases the length of a material. What you have here is called an extension, this one here. The second type of deformation is called um, a compression. Okay, let me call this capital E, please. All right, the second type is called compression, capital C. Now, compression is a kind of deformation that has to do with the reduction in the length of the material. All right, as you can see here. All right, so in, in advanced physics, you'll say strain is equal to deformation because the deformation can either be an extension or a compression. So if you are just saying extension over length, that means we are saying that the length has just been increased. We are not considering the decreased length of the uh, material. So that's, that's the concept, um, basically. All right, the third one we have here, the third concept we we'll have here is called Young's modulus, right? It's going to be called Young's modulus. This is our third concept here. Young's modulus is capital E. That's the number English alphabet E. Capital E. Now, Young's modulus is simply uh, also called the modulus of elasticity. Okay? It's called modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus. By definition, Young's modulus is simply the ratio of the stress on a material to the strain caused by it. All right, so I'm saying that by mathematical expression, Young's modulus E is equal to stress all over strain. All right, we said stress is sigma, strain is epsilon. So we have this. Okay, so what next? We also said stress is measured in Newton per meter squared talking about SI units, we also said strain has one, that's no SI unit because meters cancel meters, so I have what there, one. So strain has no SI unit. So therefore, we can say that the SI unit, SI unit of Young's modulus is, of course, anything divided by one is that same thing, is Newton per meter squared. So it's important that you note that Young's modulus and stress have the same SI unit. Now, since Young's modulus and stress have the same SI unit, they are said to be dimensionally homogeneous. All right, so we have all of these concepts. All right, so with this idea, let's see how we can um, solve problems involving stress, strain, Young's modulus, and then we'll look at the last part, which is called the work done in an elastic material. So let's solve problems on this. All right, from here, if I bring in values, it means that Young's modulus E 
is equal to, we said stress, stress, we said here is equal to force over area, all okay. here, that's force all over area, all over strain, strain is simply elongation all over original length, so I have this. Alright, so it means that um, Young's modulus E is equal to simply this divided by this, so I'm saying force all over area divided by this one here, elongation over length. If I work on this, Young's modulus is equal to this over this, force over area, change division to multiplication, this now becomes length all over extension. Such that if I multiply this, we have that Young's modulus E is equal to force times length, F L all over area times extension, that's A E. So I have this. All right, so note that this is another expression for Young's modulus. All right, with all of this concept, let's see how we can solve some past questions involving stress, strain, and Young's modulus. So let's look at this question. This question says, given that a load of 15 kilogram extends an elastic material of length 12 meters by 12 centimeters. If the cross section of the elastic material is 0 0.35 meters squared, find number one, the force constant of the material, number two, the stress induced in the material, number three, the strain, and number four, the Young's modulus. All right, let's get this done. So solution, So let's list out given parameters. What are we given in that question? The first thing we're given there is we said the load, all right? The load or the force, whichever one. You can call it a load, you can call it a force, or the same thing. But let's use the term force. We said the force there was about 15 kilograms. 15 kilograms. Now we know something. What we know is this that force is measured in terms of Newton and not kilogram. And if I have force in kilogram, what I'm giving here is actually the mass and not the um, force or the load. So how do we solve this? We know that force is equal to mass times gravity. That means I'll multiply this value by acceleration due to gravity, 9.8, so as to get the value in Newton. Right, so if I punch this 15 times 9.8, um, that gives me about 147 Newton. So that's now the force in Newton. Number two, they said extent and elastic material of length 12 meters. So I'm being given the original length, right? Length or original length as 12 meters by number three. He said it increased the length of 12 meters by 12 centimeters. So 12 centimeters there represents what there? Now, see, if I look at this, please. If you say um, a material is being increased by a particular amount, that amount we have that is called the extension. So they are telling us that the extension E is equal to 12 centimeters. Notice that the extension is in centimeters, which means I have to convert to meters. And I'll do that by doing what there? Dividing by 100. So to convert this to meters, I'll divide this by 100. And that'll give you 0 0.12 meters. All right, so this becomes the extension. All right, what else are we giving there? They said the cross section is 0 0.35. Now, when you hear something like cross section, cross section is the same thing as cross-sectional area, which is same as area. So they are saying the area here, A, is equal to 0 0.35 meter square. 0 0.35 meter square. 
All right, if this is true, then let's look for, uh, we asked number one to find the first constant, number one, first constant, first constant, which is k, k is equal to force all over extension, and that's equal to the force in terms of Newton is 147 all over extension is this one here. 0.12 so this is equal to 147 over 0 0.12 that's about 1225 from my calculator here okay force is in newton all over extension is in meters so i have this as the value for my force constant the second one there said we should find the stress stress induced or stress Stress sigma is equal to force all over area. That's simply F over A. So stress, that's F over A. So force F all over area A. So hence, the stress is equal to force. The force is about this one here. 147 in Newton all over the area is this one here, 0 0.35, 0 0.35 in meter square. If I work on this, I'm having 147 all over 0 0.35. That gives me 420. I'm having 420. This man is measured in Newton per meter square. So I have 420 Newton per meter square. Number three, I'm asked to find the strain. So it's strain, which is epsilon, is equal to elongation all over original length. And that's equal to elongation is this one here, 0 0.12 in meters all over original length is this one here, 12 meters. I'm having 12 meters. From here, meters cancel meters. So I'm having 0 0.12 divided by 12. And that's equal to, if you divide this by 12, you have 0 0.01. Meters cancel meters, no SI unit. So this has no SI unit. Finding number four, I'm asked to find um, Young's modulus. I'm asked to find. Young's modulus. Young's modulus E is equal to stress all over strain. And that's equal to the stress is um, 420. That's 420 all over the strain. The strain is 0 0.01. This one here was in Newton per meter squared. So I have something like this. Okay, so it means that Young's modulus is equal to 420 all over 0 0.01, and that's about 42,000. 42,000 in what there? Newton per meter squared. That's a unit. 42,000. Now, 42,000 is same thing as 42 times. 10 to the power 3. Alright, that's 1000 Newton per meter square. They're the same thing. And we know that 10 to the power 3 is a prefix known as kilo. So you can say this is equal to 42 times this man is kilo. This is kilo attached to this Newton per meter square. Combine everything, E is equal to. 42 kilo newton per meter squared. So I have this as the value of Young's modulus. That if you want to convert, that's 42 kilo newton per meter squared. All right, so let's look at the next concept, which is called the work done in an elastic material, also called the elastic potential energy.